Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare TM video. Today we're playing Elden Ring and we're going to be doing another level 200 build. This one is the Dual Great Stars build. Now so for this one, I really didn't know what the big fuss was. I had a whole lot of people commenting all over on a bunch of different videos, either telling me how great the Great Stars were or to do a Dual Great Stars build. I had really never played around with these. I found them, used them a little bit and was like, oh these are okay. And then I just never used them again. So I didn't really think much about it. So I had to do a bunch of research and watch a bunch of videos and do all sorts of stuff before I was like, oh I kind of get what they're going for. It's like a kind of healing, damage to get tank sort of build. And so most of this comes from a video I found from Rage Gaming videos, uh, Insane Damage and No More Rolling or Flasks. Pretty well made video. I think he's a pretty funny guy. I'll have that uh, either in a pinned comment or link down in the description if you want to check it out. His builds are probably better than mine anyway. But uh, I'm gonna take a lot of inspiration from that one. So obviously it'll be different because I do it differently and it's at a different level. But there were certain things from his video that uh, I didn't even know about, like a specific consumable that he uses that I just never found in the game. So uh, yeah, a lot of credit goes to that video. But I think the build Build stands pretty well as it is. So let's just start it off with the stat recommendations I have for this build. All right, so you can see we're at level 200, and uh, the attribute points are going to be just like you see them here. We got bigger at 60, uh, just so we have plenty of health, because since this one is kind of a tanky build based on damage negation and also healing, it's important that we have the vigor a little bit higher than I normally put it, so we've got it at 60. And we have mind at 20, uh, just because we are going to be using a significant amount of casting with this build, and I don't like having to pop my Cerulean Tears that often. Endurance at 41, which is really high, but I needed it exactly that high to get medium load with the specific build I have here, and so uh, that's why it's at 41. Uh, strength at 55, Dexterity at 45, both of those just scale with the great stars, so for those it's really going to be as high as you can get them is going to be best case scenario. Uh, all you need for this build is the minimum requirements to wield the weapons, but uh, any extra points you've got once you've met the uh, Vigor, Endurance, and uh, Minimum Faith requirements that are necessary for this build, all the rest of your points should go into Strength and Dexterity. This one doesn't have any Intelligence or Arcane requirements, so both of those are at 10. Uh, faith we have at 38, and that is because of one specific incantation we're using, which has a requirement of 38, so it's a decently high requirement, and it's kind of annoying. Plus, you can you can get around it, but I think that the build definitely works the best with it. Uh, so yeah, 38 points into Faith. So, not that. Uh, I, it, it'd be hard to say it's an optimized loadout there, but I think it works pretty well, and uh, in testing, I found it to be pretty dang effective. So that's the way I've got the attributes loaded out. Again, if you're trying to do this at a lower level, either A, just check out that... Uh, Rage Gaming videos one, because I think he's at level 125 for that one, so that would obviously be a great way to go. Or just uh, scale down your strength and dexterity, because yes, you're going to deal less damage that way, but you're still going to be able to do everything else that this build is optimized for. And so it'll take you more hits to take out your enemy, but it's still going to work in essentially the same way. So yeah, that's uh, attribute loadout. And for our equipment, you can see I've got everything equipped right here. So uh, just starting off with our weapons, we're going to have, uh, obviously, the two primary weapons are the Great Stars. And so for the primary one, we've got the Endure skill, which is just going to be a quick ground pound skill where you slam your weapon in the ground and it gives you a big boost to poise, which is great because it's going to help with that, uh, well, obviously giving us much higher poise. So that way when we get hit, we don't get staggered and taken out of whatever animation we're doing. We can kind of just ignore the hit. Uh, and that's going to pair with the rest of our gear, which gives us a really high poise with this build anyway. And then for that, we're going to give it the cold affinity. So the frostbite one, just so that way we're also building frost build up with this weapon. It works really well in addition because the great stars start with a passive effect that gives you a blood loss build up so now we have blood loss and frostbite for attributes required to use this one strength of 22 dexterity of 12 so those are going to be your minimum requirements uh, for this build if you have less attribute points to use than obviously at level 200 um, but yeah so the first one we want to put the cold affinity endure on there uh, the second one uh, you can do a lot of different things with this is one that uh, rage gaming did a lot differently than I do here but I like to have that flame affinity added on there so I just use the flaming strike ash of war on there so I could get that extra fire damage uh, this this one still does your blood loss build up but this way we have fire damage adding on top so along with our bleed we've got fire and the fire interrupts the frost so that way you can keep redoing it and just maximize damage that way so i like to whenever i do a, uh, anything with frostbite i like to have some sort of fire going in there because it interrupts the frost build up and helps you able to restart it over and over again and since your frost build up is 127 with the cold great stars it doesn't take long to spec it all the way up to the top anyway so this this combination works really well in my opinion adding quite a bit more damage to the build than the initial one that uh, uh, Rage Gaming did. Then we have the Finger Seal, just because we are going to cast some incantations. You could use any one you want, but I'm not casting any offensive incantations, so the scaling doesn't really matter. I just need something to cast with. And the Finger Seal just had the lowest requirements. Uh, I mean, obviously, if you have a, a Faith requirement of 38, you could use something else anyway, because that's going to open up other seals, but this one's easy to get. You just get it at the round table hole, and like I said, it doesn't matter for incantation scaling, so that's why I use this one. Then for our armor, here's another thing that's going to be pretty important for the build, but not totally essential. So I'm using the Veteran set, and 
And the reason I'm using the veteran set is because it's one of like the three best ones as far as poise goes. Obviously the damage negation is also very good, but mostly it's about the poise for this. And so you have the bull goat set, the omen set, and the veteran set. All of them have very high poise. The thing about the veteran set is, is it weighs a lot less than the other two. And especially if you're using all of it with the bull goat talisman, which we are, you see that we have our poise at 105. So our poise is going to be really, really high for this build. And then if you use endure, it makes it as high as it can get. I mean, almost as high as it can get because you could use uh, the bull goat set and get higher poise, but then you have a significantly heavier suit of armor and would need to switch your points around for that. So I think the veteran set, not only does it look great, but also uh, it's got the perfect balance of damage negation, poise, and weight. That's why we're using the veteran set as armor. If you don't have this or can't get it or whatever, the banished knight set is another good option because it's got decently high poise, pretty high damage negation, and again, doesn't weigh very much. Other than that, obviously the omen set and bull goat set are going to be great options because they have really high poise and really high damage negation, but they are significantly heavier. If you use one of them, you're going to have to swap out something else so that you can actually carry stuff that weighs that much and not be in the heavy load range. So yeah, I use the veteran set. Then for our talismans, I already said we're going to be using the bull goat's talisman, which raises our poise. That brings us up to the 105 mark, which is uh, obviously perfect for this build. Then we have uh, the air trees favor plus two, which is going to raise our maximum HP, stamina, and equipment load. We're going to want this because A, it's going to help with our equipment load. That's why we only have to have 41 in our endurance, uh, but it's also going to give us more HP, which this build is kind of based on since we want to have really high HP, and it's going to give us more stamina. So it's just going to be really great for this build. Same thing goes for the Crimson Amber Medallion, or at least in regards to HP, because it's going to give us a huge HP boost. And then the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman is going to boost our physical damage negation, which is another huge part of this build, since what we're going for is obviously huge damage negation, huge poise. I would call it passive healing. All of these talismans are pretty essential. I guess if, you, if you're going to be using Endure a lot, like making sure you spam it, because I think it only lasts like three seconds. If you're going to be spamming Endure a lot, you probably don't need the Bullgoat's Talisman. You could swap something else in there for it. Based on the way that I play, I'm not, I, I don't like to just keep spamming Endure that often. I'd much rather go on the offensive. I'm not that defensive of a player. And this is a defensive build, so that's why it was kind of weird for me anyway. You could put something else for Bullgoat's Talisman. For our mixed physic, we're going to do uh, Flame sh uh, Shrouding Crack Tier because that's going to boost our fire attack. So our, our second great stars there are going to get significantly more damage because of that. And then the Opaline Bubble Tier, which is going to significantly negate damage received. So that's going to also play into our damage negation. Uh, so both of those play very well into the theme of the build. I had the wrong tier on here for this one. So uh, there's a lot of Mimic Tiers that you could use, but for this build in particular, I find that the uh, Mimic Tier is the best for a lot of reasons. One of which being one of our incantations is a healing one, and it's one that the Mimic Tier really likes to use when you use it in combat. So that's why I put the Mimic Tier with this one. Then here we have the Boiled Crab, which is the thing that I was not aware of until I watched the Rage Gaming videos build uh, that I referenced at the beginning of the video. It greatly boosts physical damage negation for a time. I had never found this in the game because I always did something that makes it so you can't find it, or at least as far as I know. So if you're over here in Liurnia and you talk to, uh, what's her name over here? She'll want you to get your necklace back from the guy sitting here at Boil Prawn Shack. Usually I just kill him or buy it from him and then kill him or whatever and bring it back. But if you don't kill him and you buy his boiled prawn from him, he will then uh, reappear up here by the moat of uh, the royal capital and you can come meet him up here and you can buy boiled crab from him. And this is actually a really useful consumable. A, it's not very expensive. Uh, so I was able to buy just a whole stack of them right when I was there, even though I didn't have a lot of runes on me. And uh, it gives you a pretty sweet boost to physical damage negation. And it, it's not even that short of a time. So it's it's a pretty useful consumable that again, like I said, I had never found before. And for our incantations, it's just going to be two here. We're going to have Golden Bow, which is going to give us a boost to attack power and defense or damage negation, I should say, which is uh, going to be hugely advantageous. And it gives it to you and any allies in the area. And then we have the Blessing of the Air Tree, which is going to be that passive healing thing. So that's going to give us, uh, I think it's 12 HP per second for a long time. Basically equates to like a thousand HP in total. And like I said, that's going to be huge. We're not going to take much damage with this build. So what we do take, that will pretty easily fill up. So honestly, pretty solid as far as builds go. Like I said, I'd never tried something like this before, but uh, I, I really enjoyed it when I was testing it. So as far as our process here, it's actually a six step process. So uh, we could just walk through it. The first one is to drink your physic, and then you're gonna wanna cast Golden Bow, and then you're gonna go ahead and uh, cast the Blessing of the Aird Tree. Then we're gonna wanna eat our boiled crab, and then you're gonna go ahead and use Endure, and then you're ready in combat. And so now you just power stance your weapons. And uh, with the weapons, the way that we've got them set up, you're gonna be doing frost damage and fire damage, which will interrupt each other, or at least the fire will interrupt the frost, and you'll be dealing bleed. So it actually deals a significant amount of damage while doing everything else that this build was intended to do, which is to make sure you don't get knocked out of your hits, you don't take a lot of damage, and your health is constantly regenerating. So it's a pretty dang solid tanky type build. 
So let's go test it out on some bosses. Here we'll do one without casting any of the extra stuff or even popping our physic, just to kind of show you how effective it can be just on its own stock. So you can see we deal an immense amount of stagger damage, and so we're able to take them down relatively quickly. Uh, and so like I said, here we'll pop our endure. So we took damage there, obviously, but uh, it's still a really solid build. And again, I didn't cast Golden Vow, I didn't do Blessing of the Air Tree, I didn't pop my Physic, I didn't eat my crab. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do with this build. Like I said, it makes a very well balanced, just standard gameplay build. Here we go, we've got an enemy that uh, could potentially be kind of dangerous. <laughs> Look how little damage we took. <laughs> took a direct hit from him. Again, you're going to want to reapply poise whenever you, uh, or not poise, but, uh, you're going to want to reapply, uh, endure whenever you can to make sure you're really minimizing those, those hits that you take. Again, you can see we're healing significantly as we're going. Problem is, is when I try talking when I demonstrate these, I really, uh, really screw myself up because I'm not focusing like I should be. He almost got us. So that was a particularly harder enemy to uh, take out with a build like this. Uh, <laughs> and it also shows that there's a significant skill gap between some other players and myself. But uh, still worked pretty dang well, and considering how many times I got hit, I think it speaks for itself, because if I'd have gotten hit with a build that didn't wasn't constantly healing me and uh, providing that much damage negation, if I'd have gotten hit that many times, I'd have been toast. So we're just going to let this guy hit us a couple times. <laughs> he did the full pound on us. Did we take any damage? No, he didn't take any damage. At least not any perceptible damage. Oh, that time I dodged it. That's not fair. I'm sorry, troll. I didn't mean to dodge you. There we go. Now we took some damage. Did we stagger him? Oh, we didn't. We got a little stagger on him, but not a full stagger. There we go. Yeah, see, the thing about it is the... Well, I guess I should have said this at the beginning. I'm playing on New Game Plus 2, so you'll probably notice that the damage isn't as high as you might expect. If you're playing this on your first playthrough or even the first New Game Plus, you'd get significantly more damage out of uh, the way that we're doing this. All the enemies are buffed in, in the New Game Pluses, and they just get more buffed as you go up, so... Uh, that is what it is. Honestly, like I said, I had a lot of fun with this build. I did not really consider the Great Stars that much when I had first uh, found them. Well, I mean... Obviously, I found them more than once, uh, but I didn't really give them that much thought, and I probably would have never made a build if it hadn't been for all the comments that uh, people had asked for. So, uh, with all that in mind, that's the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed it, uh, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you liked this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.